Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks for Keras at Washington University. This is the first class session of the spring 2023 semester. This class is presented from Washington University in hybrid format. That means we'll meet in class on campus four times during the semester. The first class session and then uh, um, three others during the semester. And then you will get these pre-recorded videos that you'll watch each week. There's five of them in each, each module, and there's a module a week. So let's jump into having a look at it. Here you can see module one. This is the first week of class. Each module is going to have five parts. These five parts are individual videos, usually 10, 15 minutes in length, that you watch to cover the material for each one of these I also have a couple of supplemental videos that you may want to watch for the first part of the course. How to submit a assignment. There's an API that I give you that takes each of the 10 assignments that you're going to get in this course and checks it and returns the results immediately to you. And then that allows me to then put it in the gradebook in Canvas. I also show you how to install a GPU or non-GPU system if you're going to run the code all locally on your actual machine. I I recommend probably using Google Colab for this course. All of the modules, if you go to the very top, there's something here called Open in Colab. If you click that, it is going to it is going to go right into Google Colab and allow you to run this actually in a full Python environment with a GPU. If you go to runtime and you do change runtime type, you can make use of a GPU. Now, you can only use the GPU some amount of time because they do have credits. You can buy more advanced versions for a monthly fee like Google Colab Pro Plus, like I have here, not required for the course. You can, you can complete the entire course without a GPU if you so desire. However, GPUs are a big part of deep learning for sure. Each of the notebooks, and this is Jupyter that we're using to go through this, this whole thing, this whole course, has code at the top that detects if it's running under Colab or not. It will adjust as, as needed. Everything should be able to run locally or in Colab. Deep learning is the use of neural networks. You can see the four key people who were behind the beginnings of the deep learning research movement. Jan LeCurn, Jeffrey Hinton, Yasho Bengio, and Andrew Ning. The three in the dark colored clothing won the Turing Prize for it. So I don't know, maybe that's a, that's a correlation or a causation. Probably the color of their clothing had nothing, nothing to do with it. Traditional software development, you would put in input data and then you'd write program code to process it. And then the computer would give you an output based on your, your input data and your program. Now what you do is in machine learning, and you still use traditional, um, often, often enough, but you get the input data and you have the expected output that you have and you place that into the machine learning. So you have all these, I don't know, business cases and then maybe the output is some outcome that you're expecting and then the computer learns it and it produces the program code in machine learning. And the program code is a model, perhaps a deep learning model. Neural networks are particularly good at computer vision. They can do tabular data, but there's a lot of there's a lot of traditional models that really do the tabular data better. Tabular data is things like you would see in Microsoft Excel where you got a bunch of columns and then you're trying to predict another column. XGBoost is a real good platform for that sort of thing. Then there's natural language processing. ChatGPT is something that has absolutely come on strong. It's not currently part of this course, but I'm going to be adding, adding it in at some point as we as we go through this semester because it's it's become quite quite important. Reinforcement learning and time series and generative. Generative is stable diffusion, which also is not part of the course. These two things have come in very, very recently and I'm adding chat GPT and stable diffusion both. Stable diffusion is something very, very neat where you can simply type a picture that you might want to have. Bulldog riding a rocket ship. You click generate and it begins to generate that image for you. 
And there we have it. Not really riding it, kind of a bulldog and a rocket ship becoming one. Maybe there. But anyway, this is this is amazing as far as artificial intelligence that you can give it a sentence and it creates an image of that. ChatGPT is another amazing deep neural network technology where you can simply tell it to write you something. Write me a report on the adoption of convolutional neural networks in medicine. I don't know, I just made that up. So you can basically just have your neural network do your homework for you. It's now writing me a report on the adoption of convolution neural networks in the field of medicine. I'm not suggesting you actually turn in reports like this, but nonetheless, it's it's pretty amazing the steps that that artificial intelligence has given me to add to my course just within a semester. But my point is, these kind of blends of neural net, these kind of, but my point is, these kind of blends of images and natural language processing textual data is really how neural networks are setting themselves apart from the more traditional models like random forests and XGBoost and the more tabular data oriented types of machine learning. So in this course, we are going to make use of Python for deep learning. Python has really come in to somewhat dominate the field of machine learning. At the lower level, yeah, there's still C++ and, and other things going on, but if you're bringing sort of it all together and making use of machine learning as a practitioner, you're going to be using Python. R is another language that is also quite popular, but this course focuses on Python. If you've not worked with Python before, that's mostly okay. The first two modules are going to give a review of Python and data processing in Python. Now to actually accomplish the neural networks, we are going to make use of TensorFlow and Keras. There's really two main games in town now for machine learning frameworks and libraries, and that is TensorFlow, Keras, and PyTorch. PyTorch is another great entry, and if you're dealing more lower level where you want to truly create your own neural network architectures, particularly in research, PyTorch is really, really pretty good. You'll always end up with more code that you have to type than TensorFlow with, with PyTorch. The course, I am actually working on a variant of this course in PyTorch, so I'll put a link to that in the description. It's maybe about a fourth of the way complete, and I'll probably offer offer both of them at some point in the future, but these are the two the two big players right now, Google versus Facebook. Once you have this up and running, you can run this code that I give you here at the very, very end. And this shows you if GPU is available, what version of Python, Keras, and so forth you're actually making use of. All right, let's take a look. So looking at the course overall, and by the way, the whole textbook to this course is this GitHub repository. All these modules have a lot of text that goes with them. And it's essentially the book that I've written and continue to update for this course. You can get it as a traditional printed textbook if you desire. You can purchase this through Amazon and this gives you an idea of about how much text is on the GitHub repository. You can also download it as, as a PDF. It's entirely free. You Well, you have to pay for the printed book if you want to get that through Amazon, but the PDF version of it is completely free and can be downloaded from Archive. I have links to all of that. There are 13 total modules, which represent the weeks as we go through the course. Major primary assignments of this course are the the major assignments for this course, one, there's an icebreaker that helps you get to know your other students. That will That is mentioned in the introductory email as well as the first time meeting. There are 10 programming assignments. The first one is very easy and we'll go through that when we meet in class for the first time. And I also have a video showing how to submit the first one. The first one is just showing that you can get your API key plugged in and actually submit something to me. There's a Kaggle competition. 
I run one of these every semester. I generate completely new data for this for you to compete against your fellow students and see who can get the best fitted model for the data set that I do each semester. I'm currently working on the data set for this semester. And then there's final project where you just write about a new technology in deep learning. I give you several ones that you can choose from. So this is the introductory video for this course. Welcome to the course. And if you're tuning in from the internet, feel free to follow along with all of the material. It's all completely online. For students at Washington University, you'll be following along with me in the Canvas uh, learning management system. Thank you. And please subscribe if you'd like to see whenever I put new videos out.